this is Nancy with Fix This House and uh, I think somebody requested a video on how to clean a short-term rental. So I've mentioned before that we have a few Airbnbs that we uh, manage and I wanted to show you what that looks like when we go from um, a dirty Airbnb suite to something that is cleaned up. So here it is the before and uh, we'll have to walk into the bathroom. So you can see most of our guests are very neat and tidy and don't leave a whole lot of mess. Um, generally we have two to seven night stays and uh, people don't tend to make it too messy. So to, to get started, <clears throat> the first thing I want to recommend is that you make a list. So this is my list that I have that I keep on my phone. And I'm trying to, let me see if I can get in here so you can see this. So I have a list with all these little um, checkpoints and I printed it out so that you could see it. This I have on my phone so I don't have to actually print it out each time. And you want to customize your list according to whatever you have in your Airbnb or in your short-term rental. <clears throat> Since this is just a suite with a bathroom and a bedroom, I have a list of the main things that need to be done in the bathroom and the main things that need to be done in the bedroom. You're going to have more things on your list or less things on your list. And this doesn't include um, larger things like cleaning the um, Venetian blinds or something like that, dusting the, <clears throat> the baseboards, things that you might not do every single time. This is more of what you would do if you have a short three hour turnover changeover that you need to do. So um, with that said, let's get started in the bathroom. All right, so here's the list on my phone. It's the same thing, it's on these papers. And what you wanna do is start like with your bathroom. And the first thing we have to do is to remove the towels and linen. So let me do that for you take out all of the used and the unused towels and linens, check in the corners, and these go in the hamper. Click. <clears throat> okay, next thing is empty trash. So let's check out the trash. There's only one little, eh, a few little things in there, but we'll empty this out. I normally keep another trash bag underneath and um, I can empty the trash and then reload the trash right away because this has a few in here. We sometimes use the large trash bags. We feel that leaving extra trash bags is helpful to the guests um, because they might need something for their wet clothes that they're not dirty laundry that they forgot. All right, we have emptied the trash. Going back to the list, click. The next thing on the list is to clean the toilet. So we're gonna be using a toilet bowl cleaner here for the inside of the toilet and small purpose cleaner for the outside. So I lift this up and take the toilet bowl cleaner, swish it around on the inside. If you don't have toilet bowl cleaner or you don't wanna to use toilet bowl cleaner, you can use um, shampoo or some kind of other soap, um, body wash that you don't like that will also work. Um, this is nice because it smells good and it's a disinfectant. Um, I have a toilet bowl brush that I keep next to the toilet. Guess whether you do or not, it's going to depend on how many stars your Airbnb is. So I clean around the edges, clean down the middle. You find out how to do this. Swish, swish. You can let it sit if you'd like. Tap it off. Flush. Put it back in its holder in the corner. The next part to do for the toilet is to clean the outside of it. So I'll come in. This is the product that I like. It's a lemon scented all purpose cleaner by Great Value. It's Walmart brand. So it's just an inexpensive, it's about two to two to three dollars for this large quart container. One of the things I like about it that you should keep in mind is when you spray it, it does not leave any bright colors. Some of the Lysol ones leave bright colors. This is mostly clear. And um, if you use the blue spray, like Windex, like this, it will tend to build up around the edges and dry up around the edges and you get blue marks. So what I do here is I go through and I spray all the sides of the top, spray in the back here, spray the lid spray inside the lid, spray the seat, 
spray around the rim and then spray along the sides, the front, and the back. And ideally, you should let this sit for a little bit. Um, a lot of the packages will tell you that it needs to sit 10 minutes just to be um, disinfected. And then after I let it sit, blah, 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 miracle of video, I wipe it all down, paying special attention to the handles. And I start at the top, do the lid. Um, watch out for loose hairs. This had a lot of hairs on it. Um, I'm not sure why. Sometimes we get people with dogs, cats, or just people who um, shave. Go inside here. I like to change my rag out when I get to the dirtier parts, which is the seat and underneath the seat. And you can also buy rags at Walmart if you can find them. Um, you know, shop rags, ones that you can wash and reuse. And I'm just going around here. You want to pay special attention to this section in here that collects a lot of dirt. <clears throat> and try to get all of the, the hairs off. Okay? And I think we did a pretty good job there. And then we're going to do around the base. Um, one of the ideas I have when I'm cleaning a toilet is I want to make it clean enough so that if somebody is sick to their stomach and they got to sit there and puke in it, it's going to be nice and clean. Okay? So then we wipe around the sides and get this divot down at the bottom, around the base, and do the same thing on the other side. And your toilet is done. Okay? Polished, shiny, and it looks great. The next two items on the list are clean the shower and clean the tub. Well, when I start doing my Airbnb and cleaning it, I usually start in the shower. And I want to disinfect that first. So let me show you the products that I have on hand for doing showers. This one here is my go-to. This is, I use this for all purpose. It's an all-purpose cleaner. So I'll use this and spray the whole thing. If it's mostly clean and just needs to be disinfected. Like if your shower needs more care, you've got more mold, more mildew, um, it's not a newer shower, you might want to try working with an all-purpose cleaner with bleach like this one. I use this very seldomly just because I don't like losing towels to somebody getting some bleach on a towel and it ruins them. <clears throat> so let me show you what I generally do for a shower. We're going to be removing the shower curtain a little bit. So I take this sprayer from Walmart and it actually has a stream setting. There it is. So I set it on the stream setting and I go on the left and I work my way around. So I start at the top and I spray all of this pick up the shampoo and spray all the way down until I get to the ledge and then I continue on the next side and I'll usually spray it first and then come back 10 minutes and there's not a whole lot of mildew in this, this shower. Remove these guys and spray the other side. So I'll get that all nice and clean. So I've gone around all the sides. Um, you also want to hit the top of this. We probably spray it would probably be better for that, but to get that clean, and then we have to talk about the tub. So the tub, I have a variety of um, tools that I like to use, and let me show them to you. So the primary one that I use if the tub looks really good is this all-purpose sprayer like we talked about. However, if your tub is starting to look a little bit worse, you might want to try the all-purpose bleach down there and spray it on. You obviously would want to clean the top, rinse it all off before you spray a different um, bleach containing component so you don't get some bad fumes. Um, some other options that I have that I like. This is what I keep in my box. Kaboom, OxyClean. This is a foaming, um, spray let me show it to you down here okay. this doesn't have bleach in it so it's okay to be sticking this in here so I have this so I can spray it on and it tends to take care of soap scum so that's why I like this one it takes care of soap scum 
Um, it starts out blue, it says it turns white as it cleans, and I think it just, as it touches the air, it turns white, but whatever. Um, so if you put that on, you can let it sit for a little while and then wipe it down. I find that the oxy, the kaboom tends to take off the soap scum, not just right now, but it seems that it comes off throughout the week. So it might start looking cleaner and cleaner as you use it. <clears throat> the other thing that you might be able to use is Barkeeper's Friend. Um, this one here has got a, a light abrasive quality to it and it will take off like uh, if somebody gets toenail polish, red toenail polish scrape on the, on the tub somewhere, this will help take that off. Check to make sure this is safe for your um, tub before you use it though because it will scratch um, some things. And the other thing that I like to have on hand is a magic eraser. This one's pretty beat, but it works for cleaning up <clears throat> soap scum on the edges. And so you can go like this and rub this one looks, it is not as clean as it could be, in my opinion. Get a little bit better. So the tub looks a little bit dingy to me right now compared to the walls. Move some of the stuff out of the way. So if, you're, if your um, tub is looking really good, your shower is looking good, you don't really have to go over it with a, with a sponge. I'll show you what you can do. I did the bottom half. You take your sprayer, if you have one, turn on the water and go over all the walls and rinse them off. I'm not a professional. I am not a good housekeeper. I do not clean my house that much because there's so much more fun things to do in life than cleaning up. <clears throat> so um, this is the technique that I've come up with. clean my Airbnbs. <clears throat> you can also take your can and kind of rinse this nozzle off. And once you've rinsed it all off, turn it off and let it dry out. Sometimes you need to wipe it down. I'm going to wipe this edge here. I see some hairs. And then I do see a That is how I clean my shower and my tub. All right, clean shower, clean tub. Next one's clean the sink and the mirror. We'll take those two together. So here's our mirror. I use the blue glass plus glass Windex type stuff. One there and a paper towel and give it a clean. I usually go through the whole Airbnb and do the other mirrors and windows if possible at the same time so that I can keep this um, towel so I can use the towel you know for more than one mirror. All right for my sink I like to use the yellow all-purpose cleaner so I tend to take up the stuff that's usually set out here and put this on spray and spray down the surface like so let that sit for a little bit and while that's sitting I want to turn your attention to the toilet paper roll um, I like to remove the old toilet paper that's there and put in a new one which is down below and this is just what I do you you can keep using the same roll of toilet paper I like to give the guests a brand new one um, another option is to get the Scott tissues that are already encased in paper and so people when they come in know that it's a brand new roll of toilet paper. Some people stay at Airbnb because they're germaphobes and they like a really clean space, not something that's from a hotel. All right, back to the sink. This is all sprayed down. Take a paper towel, rag, wipe <coughs> it all off. Make sure you get the handles around the base of the faucet in between if you can. It really helps if you start out with clean newer um, faucets and sinks. All right and then you also want to get all the hairs off which that one's haunting me. This section right here okay this can have mildew on it. 
you see? So you want to try cleaning the actual faucet spot right there. Um, <clears throat> watch for mold and stuff growing on the edge and under the lip and in this little spot here. And at our other place, the way the, the bowl is set up, the sink is set up, it's the dirt kind of settles in the corners. So I, I often fill it up and I'll rinse it and, and feel for anything that's not smooth or toothpaste that's stuck on there or whatever. So you can do that too. And you also want to make sure that your sink's draining. Um, you should have some Drano or some, some lye or something available, plunger available, so that if necessary, you can um, clean up the drain, put a little lye down it, a little Drano down it. <clears throat> I shine my sink a little bit. And that is how I do the sink and the mirror. All right, we cleaned the sink and the mirror and we changed the toilet paper roll. Next one here, we're going to vacuum them up last, towels, rugs. Um, we want, I already replaced the trash bag. We replaced the shower curtain. So that is the next. Let me show you my shower curtain hooks up here. This is how we do our shower curtains. It's this kind of hook, just like this. And they're easy to put on. They're easy to take off. They are rust free, rust resistant perhaps, nickel plated. And I think we get them at Home Depot. I recommend if you do this and you get these kind of shower curtains, um, shower curtain hooks, that you buy an extra pack and keep them on hand because at some point they'll break in here. Maybe after a year or so, they'll break up in this section here and you'll need to replace just one. So have extras on hand. All right, so I can take all of these off like this run this through the wash and put it back up. I also keep a lot of extra ones on hand, um, a, lot, a lot of extra shower curtains on hand, so I have a, another one ready. These were about $10 a piece. The um, shower curtains are about 10 bucks, and this is just a Walmart brand shower curtain, and it can go inside its fabric, and it also repels water. So that's how I do shower curtains. Take them off, wash them, replace them, put it back up. Some of the stuff that's on the list still, vacuum and mop the floors, towels, rugs. Um, check the supplies under the sink. And while we're here, we also need to redo this. I don't write this down because I know it. Yeah, we have a soap, a liquid soap that we put there. That's on this list here, liquid hand soap. And I check that off. This one needs to be filled up some, but I can't locate it right now, so I'll do that later. Um, we keep a tissue box over in the corner. Make sure your sink is dry. Um, sometimes I'll pull out the top most one so that, I don't know, there's a fresh one there. Use that for something else. We have an air freshener. Sometimes we put that there. We're going to replace new soaps and put them on the soap dish that looks clean and unused. So that's, we're not touching that. Here's how we do our soaps. <clears throat> I think if you follow this channel a little bit, you know I'm a soap maker. These are some of our soaps and uh, we just take two of them and put them in a bag and put one here on the sink, one set there, and then we put another set inside the uh, shower so that somebody who's staying in forgets their soap, well, forgets to grab the soap from the sink, still has one in the shower. We also keep this um, foaming body wash over there, and we just use the Tresemme um, pump top, and we just leave this in here. So pick a shampoo that you like, put that there. That's the most economical way we found to do that. We have a new shower curtain up, and I typically leave the shower with the curtain um, inside and to the edge, and we've got multiple lights. See how there's a light in the shower? I'll leave that light on so that even though the room, the rest of the room's dark, you can see into the shower. It's nice and bright and welcoming. That's just what I do. All right, moving on from there. Um, under the sink, one of the things we have to do is to check the supplies under the sink. I think if you go right over there. So, stuff that I have under the sink. I always keep a minimum of three rolls of toilet paper in here, so these people are going to have four. We have a, a new dish towel, some dish detergent, and a new sponge 
in there in case people are here for a longer time or they want to clean some dishes. There's an iron, um, some spray, some extra large trash bags, and a hair dryer and a fire extinguisher just in case of emergencies. Looks like I have some hand sanitizer too. So we check the supplies under the sink. Usually um, it's just a matter of refreshing some things and adding in toilet paper. <clears throat> so we have soaps, sponge, we have tissues, we have liquid hand soap, we have an air freshener in here. That leaves the next step of vacuuming and mopping the floors. Okay. Now it's time to vacuum the floor. So here's the vacuum that we like to use. Uh, it's a shark and it's got some nice detach attachments. Yeah, and take these parts off, turn the vacuum on and you can get around all the, the corners. So let me show you that. professional version. It's a few years old. It's serving us well. Um, not without, it's not perfect, but it works well. So it's a steam mop and you put this Velcroed mop head on the end and when you turn it on, it heats up water from this reservoir here and makes this mop head hot and steamy and so what I do is I uh, let it warm up for a little bit after turning it on and you can hear it kind of hissing. And I take my all-purpose cleaner, set the nozzle to stream, <clears throat> and I go in here and I spray the floor. It's one of the reasons why I like this specific brand is that it's got a nice um, spray nozzle on it. <clears throat> and then we go mop the floor. The other nice thing about this is that it dries quickly. You can see what I got I picked up as far as dirt. Um, the floor will dry quickly because it's hot steel and hot water. And, uh, does a nice job. And turn it off. We vacuum and mop the floor, and now we want to talk about towels and rugs. So let me show you the rugs that I like to use for Airbnb and how I prep my towels. Um, <clears throat> these, I don't know what these are called. I think I, I bought some of these, um, like these here at Target. Target carries these, and let's see, it's made by design from Target. They last a long, long time, and they dry really fast, they wash really fast, and they stay looking mostly good for a long time. So I tend to put one large bath towel outside of the shower on the floor 
and then I take another one and put it in front of the um, sink. So I do two, two rugs that are fast dry and very durable. And that's how I do the floor. Let me talk about the towels. <clears throat> We're going to add the rugs in just a second. Adding the towels. When I have a guest, um, one or two guests staying for two night minimum, I supply two, four towels total, four regular bath towels like this that I fold up kind of like, I think this is, into a quarter. So we fold it in half and then half again. And then trying to keep this edge nice and neat, I fold it down a third and then roll it up. And this goes into the, um, the towel holder that I have in the bathroom. This is the towel holder, and we put four towels in here like this. I like to keep the folded edge facing one way you pick, <clears throat> which way you want. And I generally alternate two colors going up. And the little hand towels, I'll put two hand towels, uh, like for washcloths, two washcloths up here. And then I will put four hand towels, three or four there, and I'll show you those in a second. And then we hang one right here. Okay, and that's how we do our towels. Let me show you how I fold the towels for the ledge. <coughs> <coughs> We store our towels like this, folded in quarters, but I actually prefer them like this, folded into a third. So once you take your hand towel, fold it in half, go in a third, in a third, and then I'll make a stack like this. This just sits nicer on the, uh, the shelf, and so that's the way I prefer it. And let, we'll show you in a little bit what the room looks like when it's all finished up and ready to go. All right, so this is the final um, setup that we use. We've got soap and shampoo, new shower curtain, towels lined up, uh, clean sink, clean toilet, and rugs on the floor. And I try not to walk on the rugs once they're down on the floor. So remember that, no, no footprints. And this is how we leave our bathroom for our Airbnb for the most part.